What's up, yo? Big Cat 305 here. Today we're making a big breakfast sandwich on the Blackstone 28 inch griddle. Cannot wait. That thing is gonna be a monster. You gotta stick around for that. So if you're new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. What we do here is try to simplify the cooking process, make it easy and fun. Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and ring that notification bell. And if you're a current subscriber, thank you for all the support. We do appreciate it. Keep hitting that thumbs up and commenting down below. Everybody, let's get cooking. All right, so we're gonna start off with our ingredients here on the right side there. We've got potatoes O'Brien with onions and peppers frozen. I've used these before, they work excellent. I've got some sausage patties, premium sausage patties. We've got four eggs there. We've got four slices of American cheese and we've got a loaf of French bread from Walmart. So the Blackstone is nice and heated up at about a medium medium heat I'd say and we're gonna start off with our potatoes O'Brien we take them right out of the freezer and throw them right on top of the Blackstone these work great for camping I've used them for camping before uh, they stay just perfect and you just throw them right onto the Blackstone and they've got those uh, onions and peppers in there as well to give it some nice flavor so you just kinda wanna spread these out and, and put them into a little section then cover them with the dome so we're going to basically cook these for about 15 minutes or so, checking them every three or four minutes and, you know, just give them a little stir. So we are putting down our sausage patties. Some people like links. Some people like patties. I like them both, but these are a little easier to cook, in my opinion. So tell me uh, down below in the description which ones you like better. And I also like to cook them. Uh, uncooked I, if that makes any sense I don't like to buy the ones that are already pre-cooked uh, they're, they're okay but for that I'm just gonna throw them in the microwave for but to actually uh, get that sizzle and that flavor I really like to buy the ones that are that are raw basically so another tip here uh, this Blackstone is not a hundred percent seasoned like my other one uh, as you can see it's getting better but it's not a hundred percent so raw food kind of sticks to it a little bit still at this point so you you want to let it sit there for a minute or two before you even attempt to try to uh, move them around a little bit and then you just kind of have to like scrape them from the bottom and then once they get that little crust on there they move around no problem alrighty they are looking good and we're gonna check on our potatoes you can see that steam coming up that's because they're frozen and they're that, that cold air is hitting the, the warm humid Florida air <laughs> so we're gonna add some salt here our seasonings and this is just the taste uh, I ended up seasoning them a couple times because usually with potatoes you it's usually not enough but I, you, you, you want to start slow and just give them a little bit and taste them later on if they still need more you can always add more later and then we're gonna add some oil here as well just to crisp them up a little bit and that's it. We're going to put some water down and we're going to steam these up so we make sure we get the insides nice and cooked all the way through. And again, not on high. We're doing this on like a medium, even even closer to medium low heat. There's no need to rush these. Uh, if you get them, you know, super, super cooked on the outside and crispy, but they're raw and hard on the inside, that's not a very good combination. So we're flipping our sausage patties here and look at that brown color that's this is why I like to buy them uncooked because I don't know about you but that looks <laughs> really good to me so kind of the same thing on the other side you gotta you gotta kind of like scrape them from the bottom and then once you once they get a little bit cooked on the bottom then you can move them wherever again once the your griddle gets seasoned more and when I say season the griddle season but the more and more you cook on it the darker and darker it gets and it just brings more flavor to your food and it, everything is it's, it basically becomes like a non-stick pan if anybody of you have used a cast iron skillet it's a very similar principle the more you use it the better it gets all right it's been about another three or four minutes we're gonna stir these up a little bit and check them again just to make sure they're nice and cooked evenly on the bottom so we'll are crispy all around and that's it just give them a couple of stirs 
you can see it's starting to get a little bit of color there. And I find a little frozen chunk. Here's a great time to check them to make sure we got them all broken up so they cook nice and evenly. All right, looking good. Cover them up. That sausage is starting to smell amazing. <laughs> uh, this is why I love the Blackstone for breakfast. I mean, this smells... And I'm not even cooking bacon, but the sausage alone is just, wow, out of control. So we are going to flip them again. The sausage basically takes about five minutes to cook. And then once you get them cooked, I, what I like to do is just move them out of the way. Just get them off to the side. They're done. Now they'll stay nice and warm over there uh, in the cool zone, we'll call it, so we can make room to cook other stuff that's going to go on to our big breakfast sandwich. Looking good. Move them over, out of the way. Perfect. Now we're going to, a little griddle management here, we're going to scrape up some of that black stuff that came off of that sausage so it doesn't affect our other food we're going to cook. And it is looking good. So let's check our potatoes once again. Give them a little stir. And they are looking good. Now potatoes, you want to check them as you go through. And you can test them with a fork. Basically just... You know, you're going to basically poke them, and if they feel pretty soft, I would I would go a second step and taste one after you let it cool down for a sec, just to make sure it's where you want it to be. And then here on the side, if you notice those silver things, those are choppers that I got from the Dollar Tree for a dollar each. They're basically veggie choppers, and this particular Blackstone does not have wind guards on the sides or the back, but it has a wind guard in the front. So I had a little bit of a tough time at the beginning with the wind, especially out here in the open on the lake. And I, uh, somebody told me about these, and I, I invested a whole $6. I bought six of them, and they work perfect. And you can move them around, and uh, it blocks the wind perfectly from wh whichever direction it's coming. So our hash browns are done. You can see them nice and dark and crispy on the outside there. And we're just going to move these over out of the way. Griddle management makes more room for the next step for our big breakfast sandwich now we're cooking with the rings today to make our eggs uh, you can go many different directions I decided to go with the rings because they fit about perfectly for the size of the eggs that I wanted to go on this sandwich uh, I only ha happen to have two so uh, we're gonna do two at a time but I um, you want to spray these with any kind of uh, cooking spray and on the inside of the rings Otherwise, those eggs will stick. So we put our eggs inside. And yes, I did crack the first yolk. <laughs> it's okay. We'll live. Uh, so anyway, crack the first yolk. Second yolk looked pretty good. And oh, I forgot to mention. So I turned off the griddle. Once I moved the food over to the side for the eggs, because it was pretty dang hot. And you don't want your temperature to be too, too hot. Otherwise, you're going to blacken the bottom of those eggs. So I turn it down for a couple minutes, let the griddle turn or uh, temperature come down. Then I just turned it back on right before I put the eggs on. Anyway, so uh, once after about a minute or two, those eggs uh, toughen up a little bit or cook up a little bit. And you can just pull the ring straight up, move them over. And then go for your other two eggs uh, if you only have two rings like I happen to have at this point. And then we have our French bread that has buttered on the inside. I got this from Walmart. Pro tip, it costs a dollar and it's the best French bread ever. It's so soft. I buy it from there all the time and it, <laughs> it stays fresh for like three or four days. It's great. And uh, so that's it. We flip our eggs. Um, try to flip our eggs. <laughs> Having a little bit of a tough time with this one, but that's okay. That's the one I broke anyway. Uh, that one's being a little bit uh, stubborn, we'll say. And then the other two, uh, again, after a minute or two, do the same thing. The great thing about making a big sandwich like this is you can 
if you want, if like only, uh, if some people just want scrambled, you can scramble in those rings. If some people want sunny side up, just leave them sunny side up. And you just make sure you cut out whatever section of the sandwich has their eggs that they like on there. So it's pretty cool. This is good if you have some people over or if you have a family and you, you know, you need to, instead of making four big breakfast sandwiches, you're making one big, big breakfast sandwich and then you can slice it up. I would say this would easily feed six people if you slice it up the right way. So, uh, that's it. We turn it over. You can see the color of the, of the French bread with the the butter and I've always said the Blackstone is the best toaster in the world and I still stick to that because it looks it looks great and it works great all right so we've got uh, we're putting down our first layer of our hash browns does not have to be super neat and just try to get them on the sandwich and not all over the floor like I just did <laughs> and then we put on our cheese I just use regular old American cheese it, it melts perfectly right on top of the uh, the hash browns and then right on top of there, we put our sausage patties. Again, these work great for sandwiches, breakfast sandwiches. So I just load them up here as, as many as I can. Um, I don't stack them. I just put them right next to each other. I think I ended up putting six on. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, six, six sausages. So yeah, six people. Easily, you can make a nice, decent-sized sandwich. And then right on top of that are eggs. And then here's where you can get creative. You can add, you know, sriracha sauce or, you know, any other toppings or any other mayonnaise or whatever you want. And this is where you make it your own. More cheese on top if you want. There's plenty of things you can do to make it your own. And that's basically it. We are going to slice this big breakfast sandwich up and go give it a try. sandwich oh my god i cannot eat the whole thing but i'm definitely gonna eat some but first a close-up it is so long i can't even give you the whole close-up but i think you get the point all right so here we go. We are gonna dig in. So much fun to do on the Blackstone. Super easy. You can see the difference between the 22 and 28. You get a lot more real estate, let me tell you. Um, I don't know where to start. I guess I'll just grab this guy from the end. Look at that, that is beautiful. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. You got the cheese, the egg, the potatoes, the sauces, mm. all those flavors coming in together. Mm, mm, mm. That is what I call a breakfast sandwich. Mm. I gotta have one more bite. Hold on, hold on. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Man, that is so good. This is just what you need to kick off your Saturday for some college football. Uh, everybody, <laughs> hope you enjoyed. Thank you for watching, liking, subscribing, and commenting, and we'll keep on cooking. Big Cat out.